two good teams this week at Nats Park. Game one ended with a walk-off home run from Yunel Escobar in extra innings. Game two decided in the eighth, courtesy of Colton Wong. Getaway Day promises more of the same. Max Scherzer has been as advertised. Michael Waka off to a great start. I'm seeing red. Cards Nats. It's a cold day at Nationals Park. Pitchers might have the big time advantage today, not only because of the weather, but because of who they are. Waka and Harper could be a key righty lefty matchup in this one today. Bob and FP, the rubber game of a big boy baseball series. There's a weird stat out there about winning rubber games. The Cardinals and the Nats have been two of the best teams in the league with that over the last couple of years. This is a big time pitching matchup, no matter what kind of weather it is. Yeah, and, and the more the more we watch Max Serzer, the more we love this guy. Total gamer. The, the way he approaches it. And, and the fact that, like I said in his last start, that he pitches. I mean, if you're 1-0 against Max Scherzer, you're not always going to get a fastball. You get a changeup, a curveball, 0-0 curveball slider. He's throwing any pitch and any count for a strike. He's got that crossfire delivery. He's tough to pick up. 25 strikeouts versus just four walks this year. And he's facing a healthy Michael Walker. He had shoulder problems last year. He's had a bounce back. He said he doesn't even think about it anymore. But this is a guy with a plus changeup, a plus fastball. The NLCS MVP is a rookie in 2013 trying to get back to that form. He's 2-0. and He's only faced the Reds, so today will be his first other team besides Cincinnati. And the Nats saw him several times during spring training. Matt Williams talked today that Clint Robinson might be a key matchup against the right-hander Waka, who almost no-hit the Nats a year ago September. So Spans ready. Danny, all the guys in the dugout. It's a rubber game against a really good team from St. Louis.
seven. Winds are whipping right now, blowing from the left field corner over to the other side. Could be a good day for left-handed batters if they can elevate something, but that'll be hard to do against these guys. Colton Wong bumped up to the number seven spot. He is crazy in this series. To Homer, three RBIs, a walk, six hits, and eight at-bats. And Colton Wong has the highest batting average on the road of any player in the National League, 440. And here's Max Scherzer making his fourth start as a man. Now, fastball this year averaging 93 for Scherzer. He's got reach back 98, slider, cutter, curveball change to go with it. Kind of a three-quarter crossfire guy, tough to pick up. And like we said in the open, he'll throw any pitch at any time for a strike. Only one hitter in the Cardinal lineup has faced Scherzer, and that's Matt Holliday. Here's Matt Carpenter riding a nine-game hitting streak. He goes for the ambush and hits one out to right center. Right on time at 4.05, and Carpenter knew what to do with the first pitch heater. Yeah, right out of bed, ready to hit, got on that first fastball. In, in what we've seen from Max Scherzer early on is he won't lay in that first pitch fastball to a lot of guys. He'll keep them off the ambush. I mean, when you have 25 strikeouts versus just four walks, guys are going to come up hacking. What he didn't suspect right there is that Matt Carpenter would swing at the first pitch, so a leadoff double for the cards. That'll bring in Jason Hayward. So Carpenter, a 10-game hitting streak. Hayward goes up hacking. And this is tough in left field. Falls in front of Clint Robinson. How about that? Two pitches, two hits. Think there's a game plan? Yeah, it's hack. And hack early. Well, that could have been a bad at bat for Jason Hayward. He's trying to pull the ball right here to get Matt Carpenter at least to third base. Kind of cuts across one. Clint Robinson in left field today couldn't get there. And Max Scherzer are going to have to redline here in the first inning right out of the gate. Yeah, Matt Holliday next. He's had four hits and RBI in the series. Had his season starting 12 game hitting streak stopped last night. Nats will trade a run for a ground ball right at an infielder here trying to turn two. But Hayward could be running early in the game. And Scherzer breaks one away from Matt Holliday. So all three Cardinals have swung at the first pitch. Adam Hamari has the plate. Crew chief Doug Eddings over at first base. Adrian Johnson, Jim Wolf are on the bases. There have only been three innings in this whole series when St. Louis has not had a hit. 0-2 on 93. Well, if you haven't seen Max Scherzer yet, he has an extra gear with runners in scoring position. We've seen in his first two starts, he's got reach back 97-98. But he has to go to it real early here. Let's see if he can get it done. Holiday 0 for 3 career against him with a pair of strikeouts. Long look at Hayward. And the fastball pops upstairs. Holiday. 750 with runners in scoring position. Small sample, but that's the most of any hitter in the league. Hold and hold, and then Carpenter comes down the line, and Max steps off. Now, Holiday, a good mistake hitter. He's thinking about going up the middle the other way. Anything out over the plate, he likes to get extended. Doesn't like the ball hard and close to him. That was soft and away. Two two pitch with nobody out. A lot of day baseball today. Marlins have won at Philadelphia. The Mets are winning again, trying to make it 11 straight. Going in. Big lead by Hayward. Holding. Got him! 
Matt Holiday backed up and the ball got the inside corner for a big first down. But, but we talk about Max Scherzer pitcher. That this was set up by the slider away the pitch before. You see the fourth pitch in the sweet sequence down and away. In the book on holidays, fastballs in, pound them in, so he got him leaning out over the plate with the slider. Then he goes two seamer in. Holiday can't pull the trigger, and a big out for Scherzer here in the first. Tough matchup here, left handed power guy, Matt Adams. Not really a ground ball hitter. Max will have to trick him into one here. A couple of soft tosses, not a word first, just to keep the potential double play in order. You see Ryan Zimmerman come off and meet that slow throw by Scherzer. Matt Carpenter creeping down the line at third base. He had thoughts about stealing home on the pickoff. Adams in the series, two for six with a homer. A couple of RBIs. Harder throw that time. Then he pulls the string on an 84 changeup. Great pitch to get ahead. We see how he's holding his delivery, trying to disrupt the timing of Jason Hayward at first base. And then it goes first pitch changeup to Matt Adams way out in front. The cards are hacking. Got him a couple of runners. Target is on the outer edge. And Scherzer got it out there. Adams late, no balls, two strikes. Jason Worth with the day off in left field. Clint Robinson takes over. Span Harper, center and right. Desmond Escobar left side. Espinosa Zimmerman right side. And Jose Lobaton giving Wilson Ramos a day off. Seen Adams in this series on two strikes, shorten up and take it the other way. He's hitting just 225. Power numbers, though, okay. Both of his home runs on the road. Hayward still parked at first. Scherzer are doing a nice job right now controlling the running game. Varying his tempo. Randy Knorr calling the throwovers, trying to keep that double play in order. Gets away, and St. Louis has the lead. Matt Scherzer with a wild pitch, another runner to scoring position. Let's see what pitch it was. I think he just hung on to a changeup a little bit too long, spiked it. Jose Lobaton, who's really good at blocking balls, really didn't have a chance on that 58 footer. That's not an unearned run because of the wild pitch, but the Nats have given away some in this series. And a 1 2 to Adams. Way out ahead of that off speed pitch. Yeah, but the thing I brought up about the hits in almost every inning of this series, the Nats pitching staff has been under pressure from the St. Louis offense. Eleven hits last night, 13 on Tuesday. And I'm only counting one. One, two, three inning for the entire staff in this series so far. The sixth inning for Doug Fister last night. Crazy. Two, two, instead of step off and a look to second. Center. 
That thing hanging up forever. Denard Smith has it. Two down. Well, you, you understand the Cardinals game plan today against Max Scherzer. There really isn't any advantage to work an account with him based on what we've talked about already. He'll throw any pitch in any count. So if you go up there as a hitter and you're lucky enough to earn a 2-1 count, you're not guaranteed a fastball, a 1-0 count. You're not guaranteed a fastball, 3-1 count, not guaranteed a heater. Yeah, and that's so, something you were start, you were talking about man, maybe two starts ago for him. Yeah. Just totally unpredictable, no pattern that a hitter can really hang his helmet on. Yeah, so they're just going up there looking for a first pitch heater and getting on it. Shortstop, Johnny Peralta in the number five spot. Sun trying to break through. It has occasionally. That's every hitter's one at the first pitch so far. <laughs> and kind of along those lines, too, if you get to two strikes, he's got about five different weapons to put you away with. So if I'm facing Max Scherzer, I'm hacking. There's, there's no reason to wait around. Peralta in this series, two for nine with a base on balls. Way out there and a good backhand grab by Jose Lobaton. Long look by Adam Hamari. And long look by, count. Long look by Max Scherzer. Watch the look in by the Nats right hander. He thought that was a strike. You see him stop, kind of look in there. Pause for a second. Great pitch. Had him lunging for that one. So that's my point. You two one, you're geared up. You're thinking, I'm getting a heater right here. This guy throws 95, 97. And he goes 86 on the slider. Peralta convinced he was getting a fastball. This might be a, what do you want to throw right here? I'm going no sign by Jose Lobaton. Let's see if he puts down a signal. Yeah, with the runner looking in, there's bottom of your screen, Colton Wong. There he is on deck. He's had an amazing series. No, no they sign. bumped him from eight up to six today. All right, let's see what that pitch is. It's a fastball that runs right back to the outside corner at the knees. Scherzer, a couple of called strikes on Holiday and Peralta. Two hits by the Cards to run with a wild pitch. by Ocean City, Maryland. Put your vacation days to good use in Ocean City, Maryland. Book now at OCOcean.com. 
St. Louis parlays a double, a single, a wild pitch into a first inning run. The Nats are 11th in the league in batting average, 8th in runs, 5th in home runs. They've already thrown down so quickly. Here's the Nats lineup. Ian Desmond on an eight-game hitting streak, 15 hits over that time. He's got a career base hit against Michael Waka. Clint Robinson in the number five hole, that left-handed bat giving Jason Wirt the day off. Waka makes his third career start against the Nats. They beat him in this ballpark last year. That fastball straight over the top average is 93. He'll cut the fastball in the upper 80s. Curveball changeup to go with it. Changeup's a good one, but he's really been throwing his curveball more lately than he ever has. He used to just throw it 5% of the time. Now he's throwing it 17% of the time. And it's just a matter of him throwing it, trusting it. Mike Matheny said he's getting lots of confidence in that pitch. And yeah, you wonder if maybe uh, Adam Wainwright had something to do with that. Maybe. He's uh, lived with a good curveball for a long, long time. Now Waka misses upstairs 3 0. Denard 0 for 4 career against him. Everybody in the lineup has faced Waka except for the rookie Clint Robinson. He walked him on four after being given a one run lead. And so the defense for the Cardinals behind Michael Waka today. Holiday J. Hayward, the outfield. Peralta Carpenter left side. Wong Adams right side. And Tony Cruz behind the plate. Giving Yadier Molina the day game off. Waka's a guy you got to get early. His last start against the Reds, Joey Votto hit a home run in the first off him. I mean, he's one of those guys when he settles down, he gets into a rhythm. He's tough to hit. And I think he might have given up a first inning home run his first start to Todd Frazier as well. Here's Ian Desmond. Two for nine in the series. Keeping his hitting streak alive, though. And he tried to check it on a pitch upstairs. I mean, being aggressive is one thing, but when there's a four-pitch walk to start up a game, you, you have to get him in the strike zone. That that was ball five. That was upstairs. O2 quickly to Desmond. Who's driven in five runs, 18 hits, 60 at bats. And against Waka, career one for six, three strikeouts. Then he takes a fastball right down the middle. One out. Waka, if you remember, was the NLCS MVP as a rookie in 2013. And you look at him now, Carp, he's still just 23 years old. Yeah. I mean, he had shoulder problems last year. Was 5-6 and six with a 3-2-0 in 19 starts. And you also remember he gave up that walk-off series-winning home run of Game 5 in the NLCS to Travis Ishikawa. Bryce Harper steps in and a throw over. But when we saw him huh. in 2013, he had that no hitter going. Brian Zimmerman broke it up late. He was one of the better pitchers we had seen all year. His fastball that night was 97. <laughs> and I think his changeup was in the mid to low 80s. And he had two pitches, and that was all he needed. Yeah. Huge difference between the heater and the off speed in terms of the MPH. Yeah, they actually called it right shoulder stress reaction. Had him on the DL June 8th to September 3rd last year. Didn't fare very well against the Giants in that series with a high ERA. And Harper, a lash went out to center, but it's right at John Jay. And then John Jay kind of laid back and the ball fell in front of him. The guy who's caught everything within 50 yards of him in this series, and that one dropped in. No well, day game, he got a bad break. Didn't see it very well. And, and Bryce Harper, a guy when he swings, your first thought is to go back. You know, he's been hitting the cover off the ball early in this series. See it right off the end, just kind of rolls that top hand to get on top of it and watch the jump by Jay at the top of the screen. He kind of went toward right center field, realized it was going to be in front of him, and it was too late. Hands, there goes the no hitter. <laughs> Here's Zimmerman. Bryant has four hits in RBI in this series. 
That ball with enough tail on it to get it off the plate inside. One hit career against this guy and it prevented some history. Two years ago. Just a high chopper in St. Louis right off of Waka's glove. That's a cutting action. Pitch right to the outside edge. Has done most of his damage with runners out there this year. 12 RBI lead the Nats. Two and one. Zimmerman pulls that 87 well out ahead. And the count 2 2. Ryan, seven RBIs. Actually, seven games, nine RBIs over that time. Tied for six in the league with a dozen. And he'll hit this ball out to right center, hanging up. Jay made the early call, and then Hayward took it anyway. And then tagging, heading for third, Denard Span on the second out. Well, here's that Zimmerman Waka thing back on September 24th. One out to go. Yeah, look at fastball he's featuring. Then this right here. It's the longest I've ever had to wait as a broadcaster to say there goes the no hitter. <laughs> Two outs into the ninth, eh? <laughs> Didn't think I was going to say it that night, to be honest. He had some of the best stuff we had seen. Yeah. And if Pete Cosmas' throw would have been on target, tough play, who knows? I think I remember about that night and the first time I saw him. His fastball was mid to upper 90s, but his changeup didn't have a whole lot of fade to it like it has now. It, it would just mimic his four-seam fastball. They were both identical with the same arm speed. One one to Clint Robinson. And I watched some video on him today before the game and his, his changeup has more fade to it this year than I remember it having. The rookie Robinson seven for 24 couple of RBIs. Hits one well to center, but John Jay's tracking that one. Unlucky is Robinson on a shot straight away. A walk and a single, the Nats strand two, and they trail early. I remember him 
Smile, and I remember that smile. Remember that smile? He's taking ground balls at third base. <laughs> He's going to start his rehab assignment in Harrisburg tomorrow. And look at the ranks for Anthony Rendon last year. Fifth in the NL MVP voting. And you can get an idea why. Yeah, he came out of nowhere. And people just knew him by late in the season and lots of accolades to follow. So here we go. Top of the second. Colton Wong takes a Max Scherzer fastball. Scherzer first inning, 19 pitches, 13 strikes. Wong has an on base percentage of 396, and he's done some hitting down in the number eight spot. Max blows it by him with 91. Well, Rendon's going to go get 30 plus at bats in the minor leagues, which would equate to about half a spring train. And then maybe if everything goes right, he could meet the club in New York. That's going to be a big series. That would be awesome. Wouldn't Matt Williams love to have him back at anybody for that series? Anybody. Anybody. And by the way, the Mets just put away the Braves. Bartolo Colon is 4 and 0. Oh. The Mets are 13 and 3. They've won 11 straight and they're 10 and 0 oh at home. Crazy. Does their manager have to do an impression of Frank Howard or something? They've won 11 in a row. <laughs> no, he's impersonating Casey Stingle right now, but not when Casey was managing the Mets. <laughs> when he was managing the Yankees, things were a little better. Jerris Familia has eight saves on the air. I see Terry Collins more of a Lenny Dykstra impersonation guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's a fire plug. I love him. He's great. Slider stays upstairs three and two. They went on a hit and run last night, and the media asked Terry... And he said, I don't know, we're just hot. He used some other stronger words, but he yeah. just felt like, well, whatever. Whatever I do right now is working, so. Yeah. Be easy on me when I'm not a genius anymore. Wong goes the other way. Denard Spann's got a ways to go to wait for that one short of the track. Four straight for Scherzer now since the Hayward blue pit. American Standard, who's hot and who's not? Well. We just talked about the Mets. They've won 11 straight. Wow. They're pretty good at home. But if you remember, the Nats have won their last 11 at City Field. So that's why I think that's going to be a good series. And who's not? Matt Latos. Who the Nats will face tomorrow. 0-3. 10-2-4 ERA. That's outside to John Jay. Jordan Zimmerman for the Nats at Marlins Park tomorrow night. We'll bring you baseball from the world's largest spaceship. We get to see that art thing in left center. I cannot wait. Yeah, I, the I, Pinocchio miss, Dolphins. I miss my Pinocchio Dolphins. The, I think they're really Marlins. the pink ostriches they have on there. The lime green throughout the ball. Love that place. The Clevelander. Mojitos in left field. He can't wait. That ball pulled and Ryan Zimmerman around it. Lead Scherzer perfectly to the bag, two outs. Come out to Dance Park on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays this season for Miller Lite Party Night. You can take Sundays off. You're going to need it. Get a game ticket plus a drink while enjoying live music before the game started at just 20 bucks. Go to nationals.com slash party for this special offer. Max Scherzer will be there. All right, Max, get back to work. Tony Cruz has not had an at bat this year. Inside from Max Scherzer. He had to play a lot last year because Molina was hurt. Cruz played in 50 games, 135 at bats. Had a home run in the LCS. One ball, one strike. To the 28 year old catcher from Palm Beach. He was the 802nd player drafted back in 07. One two from Scherzer. Beautiful. 85 took a little bit off. 
right in there. All three of his strikeouts have been takes. Our Mazda do up for the bottom of the second inning. Yudel Escobar, now he can't hit a walk off to send everybody home happy, but he could tie the game. He's ahead. Bottom of the second coming up. I don't know about the cheese on it. That's an angioplasty waiting to happen. Do they have hot dog pizzas? <laughs> the Nationals win everyone wins. Not. I've been hanging out with you way too long. All season long when the Nats win and score seven or more runs, you get 50% off regular menu prices. Online orders at papajohns.com by entering promo code NATS50. Official pizza of your Washington Nationals. You know, Escobar takes... Is that the cutter slider that it doesn't have a whole lot to it, but it sure makes a late move. Escobar 0 for 1 with a walk career against Michael Walker. That's the big hook. He's got a slider, but it's mid 80s. The cutter is upper 80s. Target in. He missed a spot. That's a base hit. Escobar 3 for 10 in this series. Second straight leadoff man aboard, and Dan has more on the backup catching job today. Bob, Jose Lobaton hit 292 after the All-Star break last year, and he tried to carry what was working so well for him at the plate into this season. But that's obviously easier said than done. Lobaton didn't feel great offensively in spring, so he started tinkering with some stuff mechanically. Still didn't really reach a comfort zone. Now he says he's decided to just simplify things. It's only his fourth game played this season, so he hasn't gotten a ton of at-bats. But he's trying more of a see-ball, hit-ball approach as of late ended up the season thanks Dan at 234 with 12 RBIs got 214 at bats with the Nats last year and he saw ball hit ball and it scrambled a couple of teammates down on the rail well what Dan's saying about see ball hit ball a lot of times a hitter you, you start to feel for things you're thinking about mechanics it totally takes away from your athletic ability you saw that first swing right there that was from the heels don't think don't let the mind get in the way just grip it and rip it so to speak Fastball up and away. Took a good rip at that one. The counts one and two. Jose Lobatone, 30 years of age now. Actually started his major league career with the Padres back in 09. 17 at bats. He didn't play for them in 2010. Was on their roster for two days, but all the year at AAA. And then Tampa Bay picked him up on waivers. Became pretty valuable under Joe Madden down there. Cruz held it there. Adam Hamari called it ball two.
Tony Cruz probably a really good game caller. But his first game of the year, if you're Michael Walker, and I never pitched, so I would know, wouldn't you feel like, you know, you have to think a little bit more without Yadi or Molina in there? Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's probably not a whole lot of shaking when Yadi's catching. He turned that one over, and it was fading away from Lobatone, his second strikeout. And I'm sure Tony Cruz is just fine back there, but, you know, you yeah. get so used to having one of the best signal callers in the game behind the plate. It, it must be a little different ride for Walker today, even though Cruz is doing a nice job so far. Yeah, it's a great thought on your part because Yadier Molina doesn't call a game. He controls the game. Yeah. He'll be in Cooperstown someday. Seven gold gloves. I never got to see Bill Dickey play. Heard he was amazing. Got to see Johnny Bench a lot. He was unbelievable behind the plate. Had the offense to go with it. I don't know. By the time it's all over, Molina might be known as the best pure defensive guy. And his two brothers didn't do bad either. They got a lot of rings in that family. Holiday takes care of that one, and Danny Espinosa is now 5 for 27. Scherzer, the hitter. Here's that thing we mentioned earlier about rubber games and series deciding games that adds a 674 winning percentage. St. Louis has played in a few more. Their percentage good since the start of 2012. Mike Matheny, Matt Williams. Both good players. Both in their major league managerial debuts. And the other guy you think about is Brad Osmus in Detroit. Were hired and handed really good ball clubs. Both look like they can still play. <laughs> yeah. Up the middle, Scherzer. That one picked off by Waka. So the Nats in two innings have two hits and a walk. They've stranded three. Waka will lead off the third in a one nothing game. A handful of years ago, that might have been more valid, but Scherzer's made a couple of adjustments over the years that he says have made him much more of a pitcher now than a thrower. Two years ago, Scherzer added a curveball, and this spring he picked up a cutter, which feel, he feels have added a layer and given him different ways to attack hitters, but it goes beyond his arsenal. Scherzer told me he started looking much more at statistical data in recent years and using it to prepare for starts, and he credits former teammates Rick Porcello and Octavio Dotel, among others, for helping him make adjustments during an outing based on opponent's swings and various situations. Pitching coach Steve McCaddy told me he's been impressed with how cerebral Scherzer is. The righty does have the blazing fastball, but he's constantly looking, guys, for other ways to fine-tune his craft as well. It's Dan with our Coons.com sideline report. When you're talking cars, you're talking Coons. A little bit low to Michael Waka. 0 for 4. 4 for 54 in his career. Well, that's the thing that's impressed us the most about Scherzer in his first couple of starts is 
how he's a thinking man's pitcher. He was throwing a bullpen in Detroit and they were working on a slider and he, I said, how about throwing a little slower? And all of a sudden they said, you got a curve. That ball's trouble, but Harper's over there and Bryce will take a slide after covering lots of ground. Ball just had enough slice to get back to him. A ball hit well by Michael Walker. And Harper kind of shading him to the line and in had to go a long ways for this, but the ball kind of tailed back to him. You see the sun maybe a little factor as the glasses are lit up. Nice running catch into a slide by Bryce Harper. Matt Carpenter coming up. Let's see what he gets on the first pitch this time. First pitch fastball to start the game, and he hit it out to the scoreboard in right field. <laughs> it's a fastball. The last pitch he thought he was going to see. <laughs> Scherzer, a native of St. Louis, hasn't pitched against the Cardinals since 09 when he was with the Tigers. Hasn't fared real well against him. Failing to last more than five innings in either of his first two starts. Coming into this one is ERA, first in the National League at 0.83. Walking not bad, 1.35, top five for him. Well, in 2003, Scherzer was drafted in the 43rd round by the Cardinals from his high school in Chesterfield, Missouri. Turned it down, went to University of Missouri instead, and then he was a finance major. Go figure. <laughs> <laughs> it's a guy that could use that degree, right? Well, he's got plenty of numbers to figure out for the rest of his life. That's for sure. Good for him. Two balls, two strikes. Target away. Paints there. Look what Carpenter does with it. Just rides the pitch right back where it was coming. And Matt Carpenter is two for two, and his batting average back up around the 390 mark. Oh, he's locked. Absolutely locked. Hey, it doesn't matter what you throw him. He's on it. I mean, we've seen him stay back on off speed. We've seen him pull the ball for home runs. Now going the other way for a base hit. This is a hard ball club to pitch to. A 10 game hitting streak. They just don't have guys up there trying to pull it out of the park. Although they hit three last night. That's as nice as a double play can be. 4 6 3 started by Danny Espinosa. Desmond in the middle. And the Nats turn their 15th of the year. And a quick, efficient way for Max Scherzer to get out of the top of the third. Top of the order coming up. Third inning. Nats Plus is back, folks, for 2015. It features incredible benefits, including discounts, exclusive events, and more for a limited time. 
New members can also receive an official 10th anniversary Nationals jersey. That's while supplies last. Wow. Go to nationals.com slash Nats Plus and join right now. Michael Walker, 28 pitches, 18 strikes. First time around, the Nats went two for eight with a base on balls. Span walked starting off the day for the Washington offense. That was his first base on balls. He's four for 15, playing in his fourth game. He had a good take and a ball under his hands, 1-1. Carpenter even with a bag at third, well off the line. Inside, looks like Waka wants to jam Denard, and make him pull the ball. He's been quick in there though early. High strike, 2-2 two -two in the outfield. Just very slightly plays him the other way. A little 2-1 change up from Michael Waka. Spam looking fastball. Yeah, Mercedes Benz all over it, right on the edge. 2-2 two -two pitch. Denard up the middle and Waka right into his glove on the left side of his body. Ball found him. It's been a pretty good fielding position here. Even though he kind of fell to the, the first base side, squared it in our span and charged it nicely. <laughs> Big fella, 6'6, 210, pitched at Texas AM. He's from Iowa originally. And the Desmond curveball way outside. Right after Span on a four pitch walk in the first inning, Ian swung at the first pitch, got 0 2, and then took a fastball in there. That is a filthy changeup. Wow. Not always guaranteed a 2 1 fastball. Let's see if he goes back to that changeup here behind the count. 91 cutting away from Ian handled by Wong to down for the achiever in you PNC Bank with our minor league report Austin Voth we checked in on him a couple of times over the last couple of seasons 2 and 0 with a two and a half ERA and three starts double a Harrisburg he gets to say hi to Anthony Rendon tomorrow and a 12 and 7 minor league record Austin Voss. Call him up. He's so ready. He's from Redmond, Washington. Went to the University of Washington in Seattle. Fifth rounder back in 2013. So he is still very early in his professional career. Bryce Harper, a flare to center for a hit first time. Counts even 1 1. He's now the most walked batter, at least he was going into today's games in the National League with 14. In fact, the major league leader. It's been patient, seeing the ball big. It's been ID in the off speed like I've never seen before. Saw 95 upstairs, couldn't get to it. And his head's been still if you haven't seen him play yet. He's not lunging at the baseball. He's tremendous balance throughout the swing. Ryan Zimmerman, if the inning continues. Harper got jammed. And that one to Colton Wong. Nationals go one, two, three for the first time in this one. Three, four, five coming up for St. Louis to the middle innings we go.
A run on three hits. Your next 16, the road trip to Miami, Atlanta, New York. How about that four gamer at New York starting next Thursday? Then the Marlins and the Braves come right back here. So it's all in the division family for the next two and a half weeks. Where's the pitching matchups for all those 16 games? <laughs> Let's go. The crew would have had to get here at 530 this morning. And some of them, I'm sure, did. Over to Desmond, Ian to his left, and that takes care of Matt Holiday on one pitch. Fourth inning underway. I just want to tell our crew how great a job they've done on this homestand. Now in its seventh game, it's our honor to work with the mass and men and women every day, and a lot of them were here early today. And off to Ed, Miami and Atlanta, New York, some of us go. But hats off to our great crew, and we appreciate them. Matt Adams takes one on the inside corner. So the Marlins will be 5 and 11 when the Nats meet them tomorrow. Coming off a couple of wins at Philly. Adams fly ball to center first time. Max Scherzer commanding the edges low in the zone. Love the way he flips the ball into his bare hand after every pitch. It's almost like it's Sandlot stuff. Every time he gets it back from the catcher, flips it into his bare hand from the glove. Broken bat on a curveball, and Bryce Harper cruises to it. It's a tough first inning for Max. Carpenter ambushed him, then a little bloop by Hayward fell in. The wild pitch scored the game's only run. There's Johnny Peralta. He was called out on strikes, ending that top of the first. Hitting conditions not great coming up now. Shadows from the third base grandstand and the light towers approaching the mound. And that's another busted bat. Hit off the side of the mound. Came up a little bit on Ian Desmond right at the end. And Max Scherzer is working very efficiently as we approach rush hour. Him too. He really made some good pitches in that first inning, even though he gave up the run. And Michael Walker's changeup has been, well, Michael Walker's changeup. It's a good one. Yeah, the difference the Carpenter leadoff double, the Hayward bloop, and a wild pitch. Both guys have good pitch counts, although Scherzer's gone through four now. Ryan Zimmerman, Clint Robinson, 
Yunel Escobar, bottom of the fourth for the Nets, who've been out hit 3 2. Good take by Ryan. That was close. Walker was the first rounder. 19th player overall taken back in 12. Zimmerman strokes one down the line. If it's got a little English on it, he might be thinking about two, but Hayward got over quickly to cover it up. He's not running well, Carp. Yeah, he really pulled up short at first. You know, he, he stretched out an infield single, was, I think it was last night, or maybe the night before, where he really reached for the bag. He wasn't running the same after that, and this is a double for Ryan Zimmer. Remember the hamstring problems last year, but you see him running right here. He, yeah. He's just, he knows he's not taking a chance. That turn is awkward. Yeah, there's definitely something going on. He had two infield hits last night. One to the right side that he had to beat out when Adams had nobody to throw it to. It was the first one, Carby. That really was it. Long lunge to get to the bag, and I watched him after. And he was a ginger on the second one. And that was just that, that that told the whole story. Yeah, he's not, not he's not 100 percent. Take 80 percent. Yeah, excuse me. Take 80 percent of Ryan Zimmerman right now. But on a cold day like this. Clint Robinson takes one off speed outside one one. He's not even getting back to the bag after his secondary really well. Kind of stumble back into first right there. So Dan Ugla might be on alert in the dugout. Or Tyler Moore. Yeah. Second Ugla maybe comes into second and Espinosa to third if needed. And as FP mentions Tyler Moore's name, he has been working out at third base. Oh, he'd just probably go into first. Yeah, that's true. Sorry. I'm overanalyzing the whole <laughs> infield situation. That's because you've been sitting to me next to me for four years. I'm still getting used to Ryan being a first man. <laughs> Nissan will track it. Could have gone either way, I believe. This cutter that Waka's featuring today is so late and subtle. I'd imagine it'd be tough to pick up. It's not a big cutter. It's just short and late. And so Clint figures I better be hacking. Nats faced Waka several times on the road in spring training. And Clint Robinson got a lot of those at bats in those games. Just enough to hang in there. Two two pitch. Seems like Robinson's seeing Walker well. Oh for two in this series, hit the ball hard first time. Right at John Jay in center. Good take. They seen him big. <laughs> Missed inside. Two on. Nobody out. That's good at bat. It is. That's a big league job by Clint Robinson. Well, it moves the line to you, Nell Escobar, who's been the most consistent hitter for the Nats in April. He has had one good at bat after one good at bat. Matt Adams will come way off the line at first because Escobar goes the other way so well. But there's a lot of room over there because Wong's going to cheat up the middle a bit with Peralta for a possible ground ball. We'll see what the crafty Escobar can do with the bat here against a tough pitcher. Took him the other way for a hit first time. 
He's up hacking, and that's a double play ball right to the second base bag for Johnny Peralta. I tried to ambush Michael Walker, and he had a pretty decent pitch. Just tied him up a little bit and had a Taylor made double play. Check out Ryan Zimmerman just cruising to third. Yeah, he's wincing. That does not look good. Here's Lobatone. Walker got him with a changeup first time, and Jose probably thinking, I don't want this thing to get to 0 2. Is at off speed against 74 on the curveball diving. And the fastball away. Yeah, there's that changeup again. Nats have two on, nobody out. They strand their fourth runner of the day. One nothing St. Louis into the fifth. Seven bucks to the children's in at NIH. For every strikeout by Nats pitcher this season, Max Scherzer, how have you struck out people with what pitch? 13 Ks via the heater, six with the changeup, seven with the slider, and two with the curveball. So, like we said before today, 25 strikeouts versus just four walks. And he has one, two, three so far today. As a walk to batter. Double play ball two innings ago and here's Colton Wong. Fly ball to center first time. Escobar on the grass at third. That home run he hit in the second inning last night his first time up just relaxed him for the rest of the game. Then he slaps this one out to left. Clint Robinson was playing close to the line and shallow, and that's about where he catches it. You know, as a hitter, you hit a tater your first time up. Now every play on defense is easy. You know, you're almost like at a casino playing with house money. You did something well early in the game, and now, I mean, his game last night was one of the better games I've seen from a second baseman in a long time. Yeah. 
Yeah, he's another kid. John Jay, Tony Cruz, the next two. And a fly ball to Clint Robinson. Max Scherzer's retired. 13 of the last 14 Cardinals. Junior Nationals Kids Club. Look at all the stuff you can get. That's presented by Harris Teeter. Nats gear. You get meet and greets, special offers, much more. Go to nationals.com slash junior nats. 12 and under. Junior Nationals Kids Club. Nata dudes, what's up? Looking good with the hoodies under the jerseys here. A little day game at the yard. Fastball in there, 91 for Max Scherzer. Tony Cruz struck out looking first time. Pitcher on deck. Top five. Wow. That thing looked like a fastball forever. Then it was the slide piece. It's a nice slider right here. Watch how late it is. And good frame by Lobaton. I swear he gets so many sh cold strikes. He, he's one of the better framers I've seen in a while. Look at him just pick that up right there. Perfect. And that one also in the Mercedes Benz grill. What an inning for Max Scherzer. 14 of 15 now. He'll bat. Well, you heard him a couple of times during those highlights. I think the guy with the best job in this town today, Adam Hamari, the home plate umpire, watching two pitchers dealing here. Espinoza steps in, bottom of the fifth in a one nothing game. And Waka just has the bottom drop out of that changeup. No balls, two strikes. Let's see if he throws three in a row. Oh, fastball away. For show. Walker first four innings, 60 pitches, 37 strikes. Max Scherzer just had a six pitch inning. He's at 55 through five. And Espinosa got another fastball up and away. Two balls, two strikes. Mm -hmm. 
one and two, pardon me. There's a change up and suddenly 0 2 is 3 2. Or 2 2. So Danny trying to battle, get on base here for Scherzer. Every 90 feet now becoming important in a game like this. That ball is rocked into the corner and it's off the wall and about a foot or two to the left and it would have gone into the bullpen. There's a thin layer of right field wall on the fair side of the pole and Danny Espinosa almost knocked one out of here. Now what a good at bat by Espinosa. Didn't see the first two change ups well. Then he gets a change up right here with two strikes and he's on it. So in the course of the at bat making the adjustment then like you said if that's just a little bit to the left we got a tie ball game. I mean that was just a matter of a couple of feet. And it would have been in the bullpen, but what a great at bat by Espinosa to stay on the change that he missed in his first two swings. That one was up. There's Max Scherzer. 10 career sacrifice bunts looking for his first with the Nats. It looks like the Cardinals are just blatantly showing the wheel plays on here. They got Peralta leaning toward third with Carpenter about to charge and Colton Wong around the runner at second base. This is where Max Scherzer has to take into account that he's got a plus runner out there. Espinosa can fly. This doesn't have to be a perfect bunt. Just yeah. get it on the dirt. Good call. He swings. And that won't accomplish anything unless Espinosa makes it to third. And he will without a throw for Matt Adams. Was Matt Adams on the base? I don't know if his foot was on the base. And there are some nationals pointing toward first base right now. He did a little like shuffle step when the ball got there. And I think Matt Williams is going to challenge this. Let's watch Matt Adams at first base together. So Scherzer swings away. Okay, we're looking at Espinosa go to third. We'll show you Matt Adams here in a second. Let's watch him. Is he on the base when the throw gets to first base? He had some weird footwork here. And I don't think he touched it. Did Scherzer touch first? Okay. I don't think his foot was on the base. I saw it real time. It looked weird. Maybe this will show it. No, he's not even close to oh the my. base. That's going to be first and third. Nobody out, folks. I mean, not even close. The main thing you should do at first is have a foot on the base. He didn't even go for it. I mean, it wasn't even close. Maybe. The fact that Espinosa went, mm -hmm. he kind of panicked a little bit, tried to rush the ball to third, and forgot to touch first base. Matt Adams has had some adventures at first in this series. Well, he's made a couple of there errors. This will show it for sure. No, he's not even close. Well, this is the one that will show you, I believe. And as we've seen, it has to be overwhelming evidence to overturn a call, and I feel like. That is, but stranger things have happened. I feel like that should be first and third. Nobody out. They're showing some replays on the board, and the crowd really reacts to the one we saw from the camera that sits above first base. So the dugout, the dugout's reaction was as good as the crowd's. Max you know, Scherzer even had a little fist pump when he saw it on the board. And to me, it's always an interesting dynamic when the umpires are awaiting word from New York. But they're watching the scoreboard along with the fans and everybody else in the ballpark. Oh, Scherzer, he looks on the board. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Well, he's chatting with Matt Adams right now. He's such a competitor. I love it. I am pretty surprised it's taking this long. Runner is survey says safe. safe. So do they have to give an error to, Ma to uh, Matt Adams for not even yeah. touching the bag there? Sure. First and third, nobody out. Matt Adams is his third error of the year. And of this series. And that be, I think you bring up a good point. 
Peralta never really looked Danny Espinosa back with a pitcher running. He could have looked him back for a counter to never did it. And I think when Danny took off, that influenced what Adams did at first base. Yeah, he panicked. He, he tried to throw out Espinosa at third and forgot to touch first. Well, this is a mistake. As we've seen in this series, you have to play clean baseball. Two great teams going at it. And this is one of the Nats are trying to take advantage of. I mean, that's a free 180 feet. St. Louis has made five errors in this series. The Nats, two. So here's Denard Spann. Hit the ball right back into the glove of Waka last time up. Goes up, hacking, base hit. Game's tied. Max Scherzer heading for third. Hayward trying to throw him out. He's in there. And the Nats pitcher doing some serious base running on Denard Spann's first RBI. How about that? Max Scherzer not even hesitating around second base. They love it. The dugout's going nuts. With Denard Spann going first pitch hack and using the hole created by the Matt Adams there. And against one of the best throwers in all of baseball, Jason Hayward. Max Scherzer said, throw me out, dude. I'm going to test you right here. A little glimpse over the shoulder. Never looked at Bob Henley. He had both hands up for a stop sign. Hmm. And goes first to third. Max Scherzer, baseball player. Here's Ian Desmond. It. Lines moving here. The Nats have tied the game. They've out hit St. Louis 5-3. Target in. Fastball misses low and away. Bob Henley down the line with some signs. Desmond looking at him. He had a struck out, bounced out to second. And looking for his sixth RBI or more. And he will pop it up. Now Bryce Harper has to get it done. You've got to jump on a team like St. Louis when you have these opportunities. Well, the guy on the mound is pretty good, and he, he has another gear like Max Scherzer does. So, Bryce, a base hit and two trips. Target right in the outer edge. He got a little more of the plate than the target dictated, and Bryce went after it. <laughs> Did you see the frustrated practice swing after Bryce Harper got his pitch and fouled it off? He's still talking to himself. That's right where he was looking. First pitch fastball, and it just got on him. Target way in. Now Bryce in the hole 02. Target way outside. And he threw it right where Cruz was set up. Ball one. Set up off the plate. back in span if you're thinking about span running here walk is quick to the plate in I don't know if Denard is there yet meaning he's still building up to that whole base stealing thing but if you're gonna go it's a pretty good count to go Harper foul tip strikeout So Ryan Zimmerman last night, a couple of infield singles, and 
This is the first one where he kind of reaches for the bag. And a cool night last night. You see how he decelerates. There's a long reach right there. I you see some umpires in the stand saying safe. And then this is his last time up on a ball down the right field line that he may have tried for a double on normally. Pulled up at first. Two hits, an error in the inning. Nats have tied it, and it'll take a two out RBI from Zimmerman. Ryan has driven in nine. Since the last game of the road trip in Boston. Pretty solid series. Five for 11. And maybe because of where Cruz set up, Waka didn't get that call. I don't know how close it was to the corner, but Cruz was on the other side of the plate. Zimmerman hits it hard out to short. The Nats had first and third twice in this inning with nobody out. They settle for a run and it's all tied up into the sixth. Bill way behind. Abe and Teddy fourth. George second. And it would be Abe and Teddy down the stretch. And the Rough Rider just doesn't have enough to get over the line ahead of Honest Abe. Pit crew helping Teddy immediately. It's a whole lot of head to pick up. That is. It's a three man job. Forklift. Crane. I tell you, folks, the skies look a lot warmer than it feels at the ballpark. Michael Walker leads off top of the sixth inning. Get in on the baseball action with Massa and text the word Nationals to 29292 for team alerts and chances to win exclusive prizes all season long, including meet and greets with your favorite players and maybe even sideline reporters. Hmm. Hmm. I would like a meet and greet with Massa and Dan. Yeah, we get honored with his presence every so often up here. Mm -hmm. Came up, said hi to us yesterday. Waka, same spot where he hit it first time, and Bryce Harper is going to catch and slide on him again. He hit it deeper last time, and Max Scherzer, some kind of run he's on here. I'll tell you what, Adam Wainwright is a leader of the Cardinals pitching staff and he makes sure that all of the pitchers really work hard 
on their swings and on their bunts. They just don't go up there and play home run derby. They work on going the other way. They work on getting their bunts down. They pay attention to detail, and you can see in this series, the Cardinals pitchers can really swing the bats. Yeah. They work hard at it, as do a lot of teams, but Wainwright in charge of that whole group, and he makes sure that they're focused every single day during batting practice. And that goes back to Adam's old mentor, Dave Duncan, who was a catcher who became a hitting coach or pitching coach, and uh, he was a stickler for the way they could help themselves with a the bat. Back in the day before he retired, and this is a fly ball for Robinson from Carpenter, two outs. Hayward will be next. Cardinals box score three hits two in the first inning first two batters of the game first two pitches of the game as FP noted Carpenter the double Hayward the bloop single then the wild pitch the only other hit Carpenter single third inning he was wiped out in the middle of a four six three double play since that Hayward hit Scherzer's got 17 outs and 17 hitters. There's a single in the third yeah. but then a double play four six three so. He's in the zone. And a ball drilled up the middle. Not Jim Stack. That's me. I'll wait out. Hayward two for three. <laughs> Hasn't had many multi-hit games this year. In this series, he's two for now three for thirteen. Well, now you gotta keep him close. Right over the dugout looked like it slammed off an empty seat down there in a rather populated area So a break that was the cutter at 92 his cut fastball average is 89, but I've seen him throw it as high as 95 Hayward, good lead. Scherzer holding it. Runner holding. And Matt Holiday is hit. Two on, happening with two out. Where to get him? Tricep. Right above the elbow. Matt Adams, fly ball to center, fly ball to right. That one whistles to the outside edge. 93 from Scherzer, who is fan four today, all looking. And that ball drilled to left, and the Cardinals are back on top. So they held the Nats to one in the fifth, and now they break out on top after two outs in the sixth inning. A nice piece hit by Matt Adams, make it up for the miscue at first base that led to the Nats' only run. Last inning, he comes up, has a chance to atone, and he does. Going the other way, dumps it in front of Robinson, and the Cardinals take the lead. Now Peralta with two outs. That's up the middle. Had some funny spin on it. Espinosa right to the bag. 
St. Louis takes the lead on a pair of two out hits around a hit batter. 2 1 after five and a half. Well, that was a little guy clapping for a rally. There's a big guy who put St. Louis on top. Clint Robinson looks at a big curveball. 72 from Waka. He took more off of that pitch than he has all day. Robinson 0 for 1 with a walk. Hit the ball hard first time. Adds a ground ball right to Matt Adams. Nats box. Five hits. Walk single in the first, both stranded. Lead off single in the second, runner stranded. Zimmerman a base hit. Robinson a walk behind him in the fourth, and they couldn't do anything with it. And then the Nats got the run. It was an earned run. They ruled that uh, Espinosa would have scored on the span base hit, even without the Matt Adams error. But beyond the box score, the, the situational hitting today. Has no. been a problem. That last inning, the bottom of the fifth and the top of the sixth, kind of a microcosm of this series between these two ball clubs. Cardinals made an error, gave the Nats a huge opening. All they could get was one, and then boom, they come back and retake the lead. They've beaten the Nats 12 of the last 15 times in the regular season these teams have played. Escobar reaching for that one, and Peralta throws him out. Folks, you can treat your clients, employees, friends, family. Maybe somebody you just met on the street to an amazing outing in Nats Park this season. New for 2015. You can watch batting practice from the dugout. Great fan experience. You can hold the finish line for the Geico President's Race. Call 202-675-NATS or visit nationals.com slash groups. Nats will be in St. Louis last day of August. First two days of September. In a ball, uh, well, going back one year to Old Bush Stadium, last year of the Nationals' existence, they are 6 and 24 in St. Louis. You'll love to win this series if you could. Fastball up and away. No swing. On the appeal to Jim Wolf.
Two balls, two strikes to Lobaton, who has struck out twice. Three times. Michael Walker gets the lead handed back to him. And this ball game into the seventh inning with St. Louis ahead 2-1. University College. Wait, what, what happened? What was this? I don't know, but there's a monument in left field because of it. Did you see people hugging? And, that was a great They shot. were hugging people they didn't even know. Yeah. And they put a plaque out there where that ball hits. 10, 11, 12. The only other time I've heard Nats Park louder, I think, was on the last out of Jordan Zimmerman's no hitter. Last year, that's the loudest I've ever heard this place. And I think that's debatable. Yeah, but those two, right? Well, moments that jump up and surprise you. Everybody was surprised by the Steven Souza play last year yeah. to end that game. Even Jordan thought the ball was in the gap. And it took just a second or two to folks, for folks to realize what was going on when Worth made the connection with that pitch. The thing I'll always remember from that is interviewing him on the field right after in, in his hands and his arms shaking and his whole body kind of shaking from the adrenaline rush. And I had to tell him, hey, are you OK? Are you ready? Take your time. And he, he was still I mean, I've never in all my experience. I've never seen an athlete trembling from a rush of adrenaline like Jason Worth was right after that home run. It's pretty cool. Max Scherzer pitching brilliantly might be in his last inning. And that was the end of that season for me. That was the last game I remember mm. in 2012. Yeah, there's a rumor going around there was one more nope. game in that series. That was it. So that series is still tied, never been settled? Yep. <laughs> in, in my brain. Well, this game will. Exhilarate you one night and break your heart the next. Sometime in reverse order. That was a change up to Colton Wong, who has hit two fly balls, one to center, one to left. So now the count full as he misses with a couple of change ups. Six, seven, eight for St. Louis here in the seventh. Max is due to bat second in the bottom of this inning. Challenged him with a fastball. Desmond was playing, shading up the middle. No problem with that. Off to Miami to take on the fish tomorrow night. Jordan Zimmerman and Matt Lados. 
4 o'clock game on Saturday. Steven Strasburg, Tom Kohler, and then Gio in his own backyard Sunday at 110. First pitch against former Nat Dan Heron, who's off to a 1-1, one 3.32 one, start. Then you see the first two games of the three-game Atlanta series. John Jay slaps one out of play, left side. Still plenty of movement on that fastball here in the seventh inning when he's at 75 pitches. He took the air out of that one, diving down and away from the lefty, Ryan Zimmerman, for the second out. You'll see the defending champs, the Potomac Nationals, the Carolina League last year. They won it all. They have great promotions and giveaways. For tickets and info, call 703-590-2311. Back in town tomorrow. Tony Cruz has struck out twice looking. Rips one to left and that'll get the pitcher to the plate here in the seventh inning. Tony Cruz first base hit of the season in his third at bat. And now Michael Waka who has Hit two fly balls to Bryce Harper. Hit the ball well twice. Got the call, 92. No balls, two strikes. Mercedes Benz will track it. Bottom of zone, 92. It's been framed by Lobotone. He really reached back for something there, 94 just away. And the count's one and two. Runner on the move. Waka serves it right side. Picked off by Ryan Zimmerman. Tony Cruz would have been on third base with Carpenter coming up. That gets us to the Hyundai seventh inning stretch. The Nats have eight, nine, and one due up. Folks enjoying a little cover on a really cool day at the ball yard.
fifth inning, Danny Espinosa led that inning off. And the changeup for Michael Walker. You remember the adjustment he made with two strikes? He saw a couple of them, just missed a home run by a foot or so. But a nice at bat by Espinosa. He would go on to score the only Nats run so far 103 miles an hour. Wow. It appears Max Scherzer's done for the day. Tyler Moore has stepped down on deck behind Danny Espinosa here, bottom of the seventh inning. Tyler Moore, by the way, one for one career against Michael Waka. Espinosa, that loud double last time up. Scherzer, 82 pitches, 60 strikes. You can look at it this way he's a wild pitch and a hit batter away from a shutout right now. Very pitch well. By the way, the Nats this year from the sixth inning on have been outscored by their opponents by nine runs. First five innings, they've outscored their opponents by nine. Those were coming into today because the Nats had scored 60 runs and given up 60. Second half of games, the offense, except for a couple of times against the Red Sox and the Phillies, just hasn't been there. 0 2 to Espinosa. And Waka had him 0-2 last time. Well, he knows that Espinosa went off the wall last time, pull side, so he's going to make him beat him the other way. Might try to sneak one in here with two strikes, but he's going to make him use a big part of the ballpark. Yeah, stays out there and strikes him out looking. Michael Waka, strikeout number six. Nissan will track it. Well, that's a tough one to get to if you're Danny Espinosa. Look at where Cruz is set up. He's set up off the plate away. And I don't I don't know how you get to that. Maybe just follow it off and buy yourself another chance. So here's Tyler Moore. Came off the bench doubled in the sixth inning last night. And the curveball just came popping up out of Waka's hand. Matt Thornton with Carpenter, Hayward, and Holiday coming up in the eighth. That's a curveball hit over to the left side for Matt Carpenter. Washington DC Lexus dealers are donating $250 to the Children's National Health System for every home run a Nats player hits this season. It's for a wonderful cause, Lexus. The pursuit of perfection. Right-hander Seth Manus, left-hander Randy Choate. Now Waka has set down eight in a row since the span RBI hit. Matt Adams is going to rob Denard. Well, we've seen the best of times and the worst of times for Matt Adams. His second diving stop in a series where he's made three errors.
as we head to the top of the eighth inning. Let's watch Max. And the day Max had C Max throw. And he was good. Seven innings, six hits. Let's see Max hit. Tried to move the runner. Matt Adams forgot to touch first. Bam! He was excited. And C Max run goes first to third on a base hit in the hole. So his fourth start of the year. It's becoming an experience when he pitches to watch Max Scherzer play baseball, not just pitch. From Max to Matt, Thornton in the ball game here Tuesday night. He had a scoreless eighth inning on a hit and a strikeout. Then he draws Matt Carpenter here, who is 0 for 1 career against him. The slider in the low 80s, fastball has been averaged around 94 this year. But mix in an occasional change. Well, that's an easy 93 to the inside edge. Two balls, one strike. But what I've seen from Matt Carpenter in this series that I didn't see last year, he's been more aggressive. You know, he's a guy that historically has taken strike one a lot to the point where pitchers just used to lay the first pitch in there. And we've seen a couple of ambushes this series. He's been more aggressive, and his average early on at 393 kind of tells the story. Yeah. He dropped to 272 last year. When on the average, he took two out of every three pitches he faced. Well, his teammates would get on him and say, dude, you're taking too many first pitches. Get up there and hack. And this year, he's kind of changed his whole approach. Well, you know, he was a leadoff guy last year, and he walked 95 times, led the league. But he is such a good hitter. They want him swinging the bat. Jose Lobatone took the brunt of this foul ball. Ooh. They're giving him a second. I like Jeff Frank said I think it's one of the best lines I've heard in a while. They don't put your on base percentage up on the scoreboard. <laughs> <laughs> two balls two strikes. But nowadays you sure can get paid for that. And if you don't get paid enough Billy Bean will want you. <laughs> OPS. There's not a scoreboard in baseball big enough for all the numbers right now. <laughs> 2 2 pitch. That ball breaking away. Carpenter hit it well, but it's right at Denard Spam. So that guy, 2 for 4 today, 4 for 12 in the series. Let's check in with Dan. Bob, we saw Matt Thornton's numbers on the season still yet to allow an earned run ERA of zero to this point. His ERA as a national is zero. This is his 26th appearance with the Nats in the regular season. Still has not allowed an earned run dating back to last season. And let's remember, the Nationals picked this guy up on a waiver claim from the Yankees late in the season. He's been fantastic for this ball club. He sure has. Impressive. I mean, when he showed up throwing 96 last year, we were like nobody in the American League wanted this guy. Mm -hmm. And the breaking ball 82 Jason Hayward 0 for 1 career against the Nats 38 year old left hander. Looks like the Nats will be facing Jordan Walden in the eighth. That's where they've got to make things happen because it's 2 3 4 coming up. Espinosa takes care of that. And Matt Holiday next. This is interesting. Career major league innings as relievers. Obviously, Tanner Roark, a lot of innings as a starter. But that P, it's a couple of guys with lots of experience and then a whole bunch of kids. And a starter in Tanner Roark. Blake trying a starter most of his career in the minor leagues. Everyone's still trying to get used to their roles. Matt Williams still trying to figure out who goes where, when. And now with the bases empty, Thornton against Holiday. 
who's 0 for 2 hit by a pitch last time, and that was a damaging hit by a pitch and moved Hayward to second, who had singled with two outs, and then Matt Adams brought him in. Holiday 0 for 2 career against Thornton with a strikeout. But it always amazes me the upper echelon teams in the league how they take advantage of mistakes Max Scherzer was pretty much perfect minus a wild pitch and a hit by pitch today, but but the Cardinals and you, know, you name it the Dodgers. The upper echelon teams the Giants last year in the postseason you make one little mistake and they make yeah. you pay. There's a lot of teams you can get away with a wild pitch and hit by pitch and it's not going to haunt you. Thornton not showing a lot of interest in challenging Matt Holiday here. Left handed batter on deck. That said, though, if you give up two runs and more majority of your starts, you're going a lot of baseball games. Yep. He got in on Holiday's trademark there. Three balls, two strikes. Up the middle, and Matt Holiday, his hitless streak ends at one game. He's now hit safely in 13 of their 14 ball games to start the season. You can follow the Nats all season in 2015 with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment at any moment with in game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Matt Thornton struck out Matt Adams two nights ago, so Mark Reynolds will get the call here. They'll go righty against the lefty, and Matt Williams will counter with Aaron Barrett. Wheels turning, top of the eighth in a one run game. The Nats trying to keep it that way. First base coach Bob back with FP bottom uh, of the eighth coming up hopefully with the Nets able to make some noise and uh, Mark Reynolds and Aaron Barrett right here great pitching Max Scherzer you hope you don't waste an outing like that yeah and you know, hope you can find a way to fight and get some runs against a good Cardinals bullpen so yeah a lot of ball game left six outs to play with got to get out of this inning and you're hoping you can put something together against a bunch of flamethrowers coming in Aaron Barrett takes the hill with his 95 mile an hour fastball and the mid 80s slider to go with it occasional change and prior to this series Mark Reynolds the only Cardinal who's faced him as not faced him as a Cardinal 0 for 1 and he jacks one to the gap in right center. That ball is off the scoreboard holiday coming around maybe a play at the plate. Nope the throw is too high 
Now they got the runner between second and third, and he will come around and score as the ball is thrown into center field, and it turns into a little league home run for Mark Reynolds. It'll be an RBI double. Well, first of all, good swing by Mark Reynolds. He's ready for the fastball, and you're wondering, is this going to stay in the ballpark? Top of the fence. Bryce Harper does his job. He hits Danny Espinosa. Espinosa kind of had to pick it out of the dirt. And he goes launch mode. A good throw might have had Matt Holliday. Probably would have had Matt Holliday. And then Aaron Barrett launches one to center field. And... That was ugly. Yeah, Denard's man was way out by the gap with Harper, so no way to retrieve that throw. So it's an RBI double, a two base error on the pitcher, and Peralta bats with St. Louis up four to one. And by the way, that stat we talked about. The Nationals in this series have one run after the fifth inning. It's been total domination in the second half of these games by St. Louis. Peralta 0 for 3 today, and Barrett throws him a slider that's hammered into the left field corner. Ground rule double as it bounces up and out of play. I'm sitting here thinking the wheels are spinning, which is dangerous in and of itself, but I've seen more weird plays or head scratcher plays in April than I think I've seen in five years being here combined. There's just been some weird plays early in the season for the Nets. That one might have topped him. Yeah, that makes the second run earned. That double. Charged to Barrett. Thornton just got charged with his first run of the season after leaving Holiday aboard. Nasty hook from Aaron Barrett. Lobatone locates, throws to Zimmerman. Damaging top of the eighth inning is over. Three hits, and they did it all with two outs. Honda Duo coming up. Ian Desmond 0 for 3 today. The Nats need him to start a big number rally.
fantasy baseball free on DraftKings.com. And a promo code DUGOUT for free entry. Well, it was 1-0 St. Louis, and it was 1-1. They went up 2-1. Now it's 4-1. Mark Reynolds stays in after hitting far. Matt Adams and he'll play first base here bottom of the eighth rolling around and the right hander Jordan Walden trying to set things up for Trevor Rosenthal. They pull Waka after 95 pitches 61 strikes. Yeah fastball averaging 94 this year for Walden slider 84 change up 85. See the opponents are hitting 185 against the Cardinals right hander. Nationals haven't had a hit since the fifth inning. Ian Desmond leads off against an old nemesis from Atlanta. Desmond career two for 12 against Jordan Walden. And the slider had him all locked up. Fastball up. You know, and when you talk about the Nats bullpen, the inexperience that, that we showed in that graphic, I think any ball club would rather have their bullpen kind of figuring it out, so to speak, early in April than doing what they're doing in August or September. But there's plenty of time in the course of a season to figure out roles, see who you want in certain situations, and see if you want guys down there or not. I'm sure Matt Williams will be the first one to tell you, you know, better early than late, figure things out. And I'm sure guys will be in the right places and they'll be figuring things out sooner rather than later. But, but right now, they just really haven't had any sort of rhythm or consistent role established. You feel like it was, you know, whoever for the seventh, Clippard and Storm forever, how long? Yeah. And now you're just seeing different guys in different places. Desmond with a fair ball into the corner. Hayward has to retrieve it. And Ian Desmond hits it hard for an opposite field double, salvaging a one for four to keep his nine game hitting streak going. A nice piece of hitting right there by Ian Desmond. And how big are those runs all of a sudden? You had a two to one ball game with two outs in the eighth that turned into a four to one ball game. And you're talking about leadoff double in a one run game versus a leadoff double in a three run game, but a nice swing by Desmond, staying on that fastball. And shooting her down the right field corner. Now Bryce Harper against Jordan Walden. One for three career with a couple of walks. Bryce with the base hit and three trips. Oh. And Walden skips that one off the dirt, two and oh. Nine hits, then that's six. Then Bryce in this series, two for nine with an RBI and three walks. Outfield around to the left a bit. They give him right center. And 
borderline. The way it's going lately, if Bryce doesn't swing, it's not a strike, three and oh. Well, he's getting a reputation as taking ball swinging at strikes. That was a borderline pitch, but it's it's not one that he can drive. He's looking for something belt high. And he also knows that his ball club needs base runners. Seven tailing away. Walden, their busiest reliever, first guy to crack ten appearances as they play their 14th game of the season. Well, big pitch in the ball game right here with nobody out, eighth inning. Bryce Harper took it. What a base on balls. On a good at bat that is, and that's his 15th walk of the year. Well, we saw a 3-1 curveball from John Lackey to Bryce Harper yesterday, kind of haunt him, and they go 3-2 changeup right there. And that's the difference in Bryce Harper this year than last year. I mean, he's more relaxed. His head is still. He's seeing the baseball, but Carp, it's more of a mindset. Early on in his career, and, and it's not a bad thing to have for a great player, but he was, I'm going to win this game right here. I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to be the guy. Yeah. And, and this year, if you're not going to pitch to him, he's okay and content with letting the guy behind him do it. That's the maturation process that I've seen. I know it's only April, but, you know, in any big situation in the past three years, Bryce was very excitable, and he was the guy that was going to get the job done. And I'm telling you, that's not a bad quality. But realizing when to be that guy and when not to be that guy is part of being a veteran player. You're seeing a veteran player this year in Bryce Harper that you haven't seen before. Ryan Zimmerman has had great success against Walden in his career. Four for four, two home runs. One for three today, and he hits the first pitch, and they're going to turn two. Well, you've seen Ryan Zimmerman do that successfully all season long. RBI situations, he doesn't like to swing at the first pitch, but he does. And he's done some damage that time, not the case. It'll be up to Clint Robinson to salvage a run out of this inning. Way inside to him. Clint 0 for 2, a base on balls in between back in the fourth inning. Drills one to center. John Jay rushing on. Easy play once he got there. Well, another rally snuffed out by St. Louis pitching.
Day. Got Matt Adams to fly out. Johnny Peralta struck out. So without that wild pitch, he probably would have got out of first without a run. But then the hit by a pitch of Matt Holiday in the sixth pushed Jason Hayward to second base. And then Matt Adams came up with a big knock. Work for Tanner Roark here in the top of the ninth inning. Jay Cruz in the pitcher spot. So with Roark stepping up, their closer, Trevor Rosenthal, just starting to move around in the bullpen. And he starts him off with a big curveball that misses. John Jane, one for three career against Tanner. Fastball up. And he misses. John Jay on for the first time. More on Tanner Roark from Dan Coco. Bob Tanner has admitted that his transition back to a bullpen role has been a little tough on him, both in terms of how he's needed to warm up quickly and how he's attacked hitters. But he's going to get an opportunity now with Craig Stammen being out for the season to probably get more high leverage situations. He worked the seventh inning with the Nationals leading by one the other day. And Matt Williams said today that with Stammen out, Roark might find himself in more of a setup role and more high leverage spots this year. I think we'd all welcome that. 15 game winner last year. He pitched in a lot of stressful situations through 198 and two thirds innings. No, that's back to my point of how this whole thing is a work in progress and it's going to develop. Where remember what Davy Johnson used to say, they'll tell me, I don't tell them. And it's based on your performance, right? He used to say at spring training every year, he said, they make the decisions for me just by what they do in the heat of battle. I don't have to make any tough decisions in spring training. The same goes for Matt Williams. I mean, they're, they're going to show their skipper what innings they belong in and what roles are best for them, whether it's ahead, behind, you know, three-run lead, five-run lead, you know, one run down. It, it's all going to It's all going to work itself out. Sometimes it just takes a minute. John Jay, medium lead, drawing attention. Dan's point about learning we talked about it the other night with Roy even you have no time to settle into the game you don't have a lot of time to make adjustments on pitches out of the bullpen like you do as a starter if you don't have a feel for your curveball uh oh well I don't have the two or three innings to get to that or you don't have a feel for your slider you have to go with what's working right now and I think that's a big part of the transition from being a starter to a reliever too you don't have that luxury and the umpire gives the hitter time just as Tanner goes into his motion. And Jay stretching out that lead a bit. And the 0-2 pitch outside. If I'm Mike Matheny, I want that fifth run. Take that whole one swing. The other team 
can take the lead away. Call it slam range, right? Yep. And a ball to the left side. Escobar scoops it up. Espinosa one hands the catch. And then while getting creamed, throws out the runner at first. John Jay all over him, a 5 4 3. Well, as Unel Escobar plays more third base, he'll realize that that sidearm feed sometimes runs up into the runner. And he goes with the underhand feed here, and it takes Danny Espinosa right into John Jay. And then what a turn by Espinosa to avoid contact. Good tough slide by Jay. That's the way you play the game, folks. That's breaking up a double play. And look at Espinosa missing contact. Still getting the ball in the air. What a great shot on the Expo, huh? And Ryan Zimmerman with a nice stretch at first base. Base is empty, two outs, and the pinch hitter for Jordan Walden is Dean Anna. A 28-year-old infielder who had 22 at bats with the Yankees last year. Over seven years in the minor leagues. And he fouls one back. At second base, your worst nightmare is a throw from third base that takes you right into the runner. Yeah. Just because of the angle of the third baseman. And if they throw anything to the first base side, you know guys are coming to get you. It's going to be tough. Danny Espinosa will wait for this one. And a scoreless ninth for Tanner Roark after the leadoff walk. The Nats have Escobar coming in the bottom of the ninth against Trevor Rosenthal. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Ray Knight. Three outs with which to work against a tough customer, Rosenthal, who had a 1 2 3 ninth last night. He's got the big fastball. It's 98 99 miles an hour. This year it's averaging 97. He'll cut that fastball in the upper 80s. Occasional curve, occasional change, as we saw at 86. He's faced Junel Escobar once and has walked him. Lobatone Espinosa, the next two. Escobar, one for three with an opposite field base hit. Trevor Rosenthal looking for his sixth save.
And that fastball, boy, 96, looked effortless outside. Escobar reaching right to the shortstop, Johnny Peralta. Tomorrow night from Miami, Jordan Zimmerman. We're going to drive fast to Marlins Park, pass up all the fun, go have some real fun at the ball yard. Matt Lados will go for the Marlins tomorrow night. Johnny and Ray on Masson 2 with Nats Extra 630. Jordan Zimmerman for the Nats. South Beach bringing the heat. Well, I look forward to seeing you by the pool tomorrow. You and a lot of other people. <laughs> <laughs> it's a oh, sight to God. behold. <laughs> I got in the middle of that. If it's raining, I'm going to be out there. I'm going to get out of this one. You know, if it's above 75 <laughs> degrees, I'm there. I don't care. Thunderstorm or not. Jose Lobatone facing Rosenthal for the first time. I just wish you had higher, higher expectations for the road trip. Uh, I was going to say in your mass and speedo, but I chickened out. You, I think you just did. Uh. Lobatone struck out three times against Michael Waka today. And the count, two balls, two strikes. Got him. Two outs. Tough day for Jose. Misses paint. Upper 90s. What's pitch track say? That's a tough one to get to. Nice pitch. Danny Espinosa, one for three with a double. And against Rosenthal, retired last night, 0 for 4 career. Reed Johnson in the number nine spot. If Danny could extend things here, ball one. And a bouncer up the middle. Peralta. And the Cardinals win the series. They've beaten the Nationals 13 of the last 16 times these teams have met. Frustrating series, FP, after the walk-off in game one. The Nats had high hopes going into last night and today. You got to play cleaner baseball against good teams. It'll change. It's early. Nats didn't take advantage of some opportunities. And they lose it 4-1. Out hit 9-6. Join us tomorrow night. Nats begin a 10-game road trip in Miami. Nats Extra 630. This has been a presentation of Mass and Johnny and Ray straight ahead. And from Nats Park, so long for a week and a half.